Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Panic, And we got a jam-packed episode. We've got Mark Gowinski's going to get cut. Darren Waller's mulling retirement. And we're going to go over my mock draft. Now, I'm going to say this because mock draft is obviously a title that gets people to click. I do have a mock draft video coming out. I thought it was going to come out on Monday, but our editor went on vacation and I didn't realize. Uh, So that is going to come out later in the week. Please watch that through, even though we're going to talk about it in here. Even if you don't want to watch it again, just play it in the background or something so we can get the views on that because that's always a a good view getter and new subscriber getter. Justin, how are you? Good, and I'll even say for the mock draft video, it has uh, has mm-hmm. nice graphics that include a little summary about who the players are, and then it also has, uh, it has some film on it. It has some highlights, so if you haven't seen these players yet, uh, hopefully you'll you'll get a chance to see it as Bobby Skinner is talking about it. And also, you can even treat it as, hey, I'm a Talking Giants listener. I'm a Talking Giants subscriber. You get a little treat. You get to hear Bobby Skinner's mock draft a little early. I'm good. I'm good, man. Um, hopped on with uh, you and Chris Rose on JM Football for football today. I'm going to be full-time on that. So if you like hearing what Bobby and I have to say about the game of football, then we're going to be both on that show as well, uh, as well from here on out. Um, I'm good. St. Peter's Prep Basketball, they they have a state sectional championship today. That will be uh, dictating my mood for the next couple days, whatever that result is tonight. How about that? Um, so yeah, we're taking over football today. We're 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 running a you know two man pick and roll on Chris Rose over there. Um, Justin, before we get into this episode, it was brought to you by some special people. Dan Hegman, not Wegman, not Negman. But Hegeman or Hegeman, Mr. Bash, it's he's he likes to bash people's Brains. houses for parties. Oh. Uh, and then Justin, we've only had f- this is the fourth person to ever do this, but the second time this month, we have someone in the family tier, Sam Nair, and which means we're going to be having a live stream on Tuesday with Sam Nair, and um, I don't have the other name in front of me. I think it's Jacob O'Connor. Justin, who are these people? Who was the first name that we that we read today? Weg- uh, oh. Dan, Dan Hegman. Have you, do you have Wegmans in Florida? I don't know, but I've heard of that. Oh, it's fantastic. It's a, sh- it's a shame if you don't. Um, Wegmans is phenomenal. Patreon.com slash Talking Giants. These people that go to Wegmans, that's that's the website that they went. For $2 a month plus some other tiers, you get to hang out with us live while we record the shows. And Bobby Skinner will send you some stickers in the mail. Plus, there's some shirt raffles. Patreon.com slash Talk of Giants. Thanks to our patrons. Thank you to our patrons. And the family tier. Just no, I, I honestly feel bad having people sign up for the family tier. But you know what? If they do it, they do it. And they're going to be on a live stream. So we'll we'll talk about it on, on that live stream. All right, Justin. Let's get into the biggest piece of news in Giants land. And that is that Darren Waller is considering retiring from the NFL. Now, it came out on Friday that he was considering it per Paul Schwartz and Ryan Denlevy of the New York Post. But it came out that, hey, he was considering it. It seems he's... You know, but he's going to come back. He's focused, right? And they talked about in that story that Drew Rosenhaus, Darren Waller's agent, had met with the Giants. And I guess the people in that meeting that relayed that to them, you know, had like confidence that he was going to come back. Then Darren Waller texts either Dunleavy or Schwartz saying, I have not made a decision yet either way. So it's still up in the air. I asked somebody, you know, gun to head, do they think he's back? Yes or no. And they said that he's probably like they would pick retirement if they had a gun to their head, which is the proposition I put them in. Um, Justin, we lightly have been asking about Darren Waller. We talked about it in the post, uh, you know, season press conference that Joe Shane had where he said, hey, we do that move again. He's going to, we, you know, we expect him to be back. And, it yeah, wasn't and that's a the key Mar- word, by the way. Whenever it wasn't we- a Wink Martindale expect to be back, though. He was saying that with confidence, like he's a part of the plans. Any, anytime forward. I hear the word expect now, I get, I get very, uh, I get very, I'm going to get very hesitant whenever I hear that from this regime. Yeah, but that wasn't the same expect as it was with Wink and Kafka. That was the, ex- like, you know, he was talking about him being a part of the, you know, the plan going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Justin, when the Giants trade for Dan Waller, he had zero dead cap. Um, right. So he doesn't have any guaranteed salary, which means like he doesn't have any guaranteed salary that would need to be paid out. Uh, if he retired, but they converted $9.8 million into a signing bonus. So the two cap space sites, spot rack and over the cap, 
Spot rack has it at 7.8 million in dead cap and 6.2 in savings. Over the cap has it at 7.3 dead cap and 6.7 in savings. I I go back and forth on this, right? Like I don't have, you know, a flag in the sand on this like I do Xavier McKinney and Saquon Barkley or, you know, Giants pending free agents because I do see both sides of it. And before all this came out, I was on the side of keeping Waller, even though there's some hesitancy there. The fact that he's mulling this, it, I, I'm actually moving over to that. And I, I would, I would prefer Waller to retire because you can't, you can't plan, you cannot, you know, you can't expect him to be there for the full season. He missed six, missed six games in 2021, eight in 2022, and five this preseason. And just betting on him to play games is a bad bet. And he's clearly not all in. And you know what? He's He hurts the running game when he's out there, right? And if he's not full throttle, he's not going to be the top five threat anymore. Then I just don't know if that's worth keeping around. Even though that... like. I would be fine if he keeps them because I don't think the Giants should be strapped for money and, you know, you know, you know, stretching their pockets. But it's just it's it's hard to bet on him being, you know, there for enough games. And when he's there, how how much of a receiving threat is he going to be? Yeah, the the Schwartz and Dunleavy story breaks and, you know, we, we've been waiting for somebody to somebody to, to break this the last couple of weeks and. It, it initially breaks that all right. He he's he's looking to be back, and if the and if his mentality is, I want to come back. Shane O'Connor, sorry, what was that? He messed. It was Shane O'Connor that is on the stream tomorrow. Shane O'Connor. I had to interrupt doing? you. That he messaged me. I would have forgot about. It. Sorry, sorry, Shane. Your name's not Jake. That was my fake ID name. <laughs> sure. Um, if you had a Darren Waller, like you know that, like I said, the the Dunleavy and the Schwartz piece breaks. If we had a Darren Waller heading in the next year being like, you know what? F you revenge tour. Offense was bad. Team was bad. Everything was bad. I was traded from the Raiders. I don't want to prove I don't want to prove my doubters right that I can't be good and I don't have anything left of the tank. If we were getting that Waller, then I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I can I, I'm down. Let's do it. Your mind's in the right spot. Let's hope your body's in the right spot. Now that the doubt came out, I, I I'm with you where I kind of I kind of hope that he makes the decision to retire. And it has nothing to do with the financials. Nothing to do with the financials. I I, I, I still think the one of the biggest downsides of the Waller trade is not the financial aspect of it. It's trading for Darren Waller, having the excitement and, and even building somewhat of an offense around him. And then he disappoints, uh, like, and then he's disappoint, then he's disappointing, and not, and not that number one weapon, number two weapon that you can have in an offense. I still think that was the biggest downside of the trade. Um, and I know for a fact I heard some things that even personally, you're going, he's going through some personal stuff in his personal life. If he's not fully there and ready to go, um, I I don't know if I want him on the field because like you said, he's already you, could, you already kind of have to write down that he's going to miss four to six games. It's the same thing as Sterling Shepard. Yeah, and if he were to come back, it's – for that base salary of ten and a half million dollars, right? Like that that is what is making this a decision for him. Is it's not like, oh man, I just want to be out there for my teammates. It's like, hey, I, I'd be throwing away millions of dollars, which is hard. so like the fact that he's even mulling that when he's still a good player, too, right? So he's still a good player. It's not like he's washed. Like that makes me think like I I don't I, I just don't want this investor, right? Like he he was a good player this year last year for the Giants. He was leading tight ends in receiving yards when he got injured versus the Jets and then missed fall five games. But he also tweaked his hamstring before the first game, which I do think hindered him a bit. Not a ton, but it did hinder him a, a bit because he didn't look as good in those, you know, those games to start the season as he did in camp or even in that preseason. Uh but he was their best receiving threat, right? Led them in, in yards per game. Um but he got hurt once again. The more time that I've thought about Darren Waller, and I had this realization, I was in Atlantic City this weekend, and I was thinking about I was thinking about Darren Waller, and Darren Waller's first season does kind of mirror in a way Kenny Galladay's first season, doesn't it? Very similarly, where the first before he got injured, 
Galladay was having just as good as yards per game as he had ever had. He was having the highest catch rate of his career. Like him and DJ were actually pl- like had pretty good chemistry. Then he gets hurt, comes back. You know, Jason Garrett gets fired, and then DJ gets hurt. Like, and, and Kenny Galladay led that team in receiving that year. Like, Kenny Galladay was still a good receiver that year, but he wasn't what was expected. And then, like you said, he had the hip surgery, came back, and was just not the same player at all. Yeah. So that's why I feel like Kenny Galladay's first season with the Giants, while it was disappointing, it still is a lot better performance wise than people give him credit for. And I think it's the, it's very similar with Darren Waller. Well, I, a lot of people will shit on the production, say he wasn't good. There was a stretch where he was, you know, one of the best receiving tight ends in the NFL on a terrible, terrible offense. And honestly, Bobby, there's two ends of the spectrum for me for Darren Waller's 2024 if he returns. If you tell me that he's going to be productive, I'm not surprised because I still think he can be good. But if you tell me that he's going to have a Kenny Galladay type second season, where his body just gives up on him and he's not the same player, I'm also not shocked. And and if anything, Bobby, I'm always optimistic. I'm always going to root for the guys in blue. I'm always going to think good things are going to happen. But if anything, I think the latter of him, of his body not cooperating with him in his second season in New York, I almost think that is more likely than him being productive. Yeah, it's... Now, he's playing tight end compared to, you know, Galladay, who was, you know, playing receiver and was never the quickest anyways, right? So, I think a drop, even if he does have some drop off, it's, it's again, still good tight end production when Kenny Galladay's drop off was just, oh, this is just a bad football right. player. But then but I think you get into the- be 32 when the season starts. You get into the dangerous territory of, of do you, if you're not going to have, the whole point of getting Darren Waller is getting a top five receiving tight end, right? If you're not going to be getting a top five receiving threat of tight end, then you just have a tight end who's average to good that can catch the ball that can't block. And he's one dimensional. And it messes up the run game pretty, yeah. pretty badly. Yeah. Um, so in a way, that's why I would rather this again. I don't mean to sound like an asshole. I was I was so excited about Darren Waller and I, I still want him to be good. But in a way, I do hope that he does make the decision to retire because I don't, I don't think if he does come back, he's like, all right, I, I'm playing for my teammates, but I'm also playing for that bag, which good for you, Giants gave it to you. Um, you know, uh, I don't blame him for doing that, but I think it is more likely, just the writing's on the wall for it to be bad than really good. <laughs> yeah, and again, like you said, it's, even if he is, even if he's still good. He's going to miss games. And the likelihood yeah. is that he's going to miss more, would be miss more than five games, right? Like this was the least amount of games he missed in the last three seasons. And if he's not fully in it and, you know, working his body to get it rehabbed and, and perfectly right, then you're just playing a dangerous game, unfortunately, which is a shame because I really like Waller, right? Like he can, it could be a huge threat. You know, we were so excited, you know, like his film – with the Raiders the in 2022 was really good. He just missed games. You know, and he comes in the camp, and then you see him in the one game of the preseason, and he's a baller. Like, he's a legitimate baller. And I, even with that hamstring injury in week, week, you know, before week one, Justin, he was leading tight ends in receiving yards when he got, when he went down versus the Jets, he was tight end number one when it came to receiving on yards. On a terrible, he, terrible offense, by the on way. The, on the worst passing offense in the NFL, he was the number one receiving tight end uh, in the NFL. Right, like, so they're still good there. So, you know, I'm talking myself in right now to wanting him back because I don't think, you know, that that six point seven or six point two to six point seven million dollars in cap savings changes a whole lot. Now I'm going to no. throw this at you right here. Dan Duggan said that the franchise tag is not off the table for Saquon Barkley. Let's say Waller retires. Would that be willing you to tag Saquon again? No, no. the 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 little the little movement of the cap going up a little bit, and you know, oh, you get an additional six. It, so you, it doesn't but, change the the process of what the Giants should do. Okay, but let me ask you this: Would you have signed Saquon Barkley to a one year, five point five million dollar contract? No, before all this. Yes. 
well, we're, this this is found money. Now it's like okay, we have some found money. That's we can. The, the, I don't. Do I don't think. It. I don't think it should. I don't think that process should work like that. What? Do you, why not? I just don't. He's still a good player, and you don't have to, you know, load up money into the net. You know, you, you know, in two thousand twenty-five, where he has a you know a fifteen million dollar cap hit. Now it'd be screwed up. And I still am like, I think Saquon's going to go out, hit the open market, and get a, a good deal and probably go to the Houston Texans. And I think the Giants should invest their money elsewhere. And, and maybe this, my my thing is I'd probably like this, let this be the tipping point to help you go get your number one free agent target. Um, yeah. But, you know, on Wanu, it, it seems more and more by the day that he's probably going to end up, you know, staying with the Patriots. Um, and, you know, I don't know how, how great the market's going to like who the giants are going to bring in we'll see we'll see how busy they expect to be in free agency but they are looking at the top of the market a bunch of positions from you know rumors coming out of the combine that yeah. they're at least checking in on guys um oh, well, let, and let me even throw that, this at you makes right? that decision a little tougher i i have more of an answer with uh why i wouldn't why i wouldn't okay yeah one year five and a half million dollars i would do that for saquon barkley but i wouldn't do the i wouldn't do the franchise tag because i'm I think we're all, you and I, and maybe not all, I'm not going to put our all Giants fans in the same boat, but you and I, I think we're we're starting to understand that it's not just about the financials and you know not wanting to pay a running back $10 million. It's about starting to build this team and its identity not shaped around Saquon Barkley. And I think that that is more important than the one-year $10 million, for, at least for me. So that's my answer. But I feel... <sighs> That does. You can have Saquon Barkley, and like the reason they've built the okay, but this is where sometimes Saquon gets like flack for being good. The reason they've built around him is because he's they haven't built very well and had good pieces around. They haven't like oh let's they haven't built this offense around Saquon Barkley. They've tried to build this offense, they failed. But Saquon Barkley has been the one piece who's been pretty damn good besides. To you know, missing a year in 2020 and being bad in 2021, like I don't think they've built the offense around Saquon Barkley. I just think he has been their their safety net. Now it, it hasn't led to a good running game for the majority of the last four years. Uh, so I am in the same boat, but I don't want to blame a player for being good either. No, and, and I'm not saying that he's not good. I think he's a good football player, but the fact is, is that Saquon Barkley can be a good football player, but he can have terrible production. And I'm not, and okay, now now you bring in the argument of pay, and it's like, okay, well, I don't want to pay somebody 10, or it'd be more than 10, what's the franchise tag this year for Saquon Barkley? I don't want to pay somebody $12 million to give me poor production. That's- yeah, I agree. I agree. I just think it's it's worth noting, because it's, you know, this is like $6.5 million of, of found money. Does it, does it change it at all? Um, because I still think, like, even if Waller stays, I still think they're going to go and get, you know, a top five average annual value guard. Um, the, and you know, next week, uh, I still think they're going to try and address Pat. Like, I don't think it changes much of what they do. Can they be like, Hey, now we got the cherry on top. We get to keep Saquon and all of this because Waller leaves. All right, Justin, a part of the cap is, uh, Mark Lewinsky is going to be cut reported by Tom Pelissero and Jordan Renan. We thought this would happen before the season. Then he got benched up for the first game of the season. And it was obviously, that was gonna happen. He, I mean, he's just been a flat out bad player for the Giants with some decent games sprinkled in. They'll save five point seven million dollars in cap space with only one and a half million dead cap. Even when he signed this contract, it kind of felt like okay, this will probably be a little two year stop gap for them. Um, you know, we didn't have high expectations for Mark Lewinsky, right? Like above average run blocker who can move well and be an average pass blocker who's gonna have some bad games. And to me, he felt short of those low expectations unfortunately like where he was just a negative pass protector consistently where you know he again he has some good games sprinkled in um and then when you're comparing him to the rest of the guards on the giants you know sometimes a decent game feels good but he just fell low of already low expectations and bobby there, i think short. there's a there's a larger conversation a one-time conversation to have around mark Lewinsky as he gets cut and it's really to ask why. Why was he so much worse for you know when he as a giant than the Colts? And the crazy thing about the Colts is that 
they lost Golinski, and, and and it's it's never a it's never a this is the reason why trifecta in the NFL. But the Colts lost Golinski, and their running game hasn't been the same the last couple of years. Um, you know, so why was he? Why did Golinski come here and get so much worse as a pro compared to what he's done as you know a pro so far before his time with the Giants? Yeah, it's you know you can point to Bobby Johnson, you could point to maybe some aging in there, but yeah, he again he he felt we didn't have high expectations for him. We knew the position we were in. Like this guy's a stopgap for two years because the Giants just have to bring a guard in. Now hopefully we're getting better than that as we do this whole dance again two years two years later. But we we know like right? when we do our free agency little preview on on Friday that guard is going to be the initial position. It is the position that the Giants are going it's to me it's the one position the Giants have to go into free agency with we need to come out with something and most likely a couple of things because right now the guards on roster are Josh Azudu and Marcus McKeithen that aren't on futures deals. Are you expecting a big move, or are you expecting a series of smaller moves? Because I'm expecting a series of smaller moves, because I honestly think that's what Joe Shane, in terms of how he views the guard position, I think that's how he views the guard position. Like You don't need to necessarily make a big splash with the interior O-line, but you can have a series of players kind of in there, and then that could be good enough. Do you view Jonah Jackson as a big move? Because that's been the name that's floating around. He's kind of viewed as like the fifth guard probably on the market. Um, where is Jonah Jackson compared to let's let's just say a Nick Gates type of player? He's well above Nick Gates. Um, and I'm pulling up the free agency cheat seat for guards. It'd be like Zeitler, Kevin Dotson, Graham Glasgow, Damian Lewis, and then Jonah Jackson's like the fifth guy on that list. Seven mil a year. I think it's going to take more than that. Think about what Nick Gates and Mark Lewinsky have gotten. You know, the last couple of years. You know, where Gawinski got six mil per year. Jonah Jackson, I think, is is viewed as a much better player than him. Like I I, th- I think they're gonna hit like the eight to ten mil. Uh again, I think Onwenu starts I think Enwenu st- stays with the Patriots and that obviously takes away the big fish from the offensive line uh market. But Unless, and uh, let me say this, unless they go get a pass rusher, like a real deal pass rusher, I think guard will be their highest average annual value free agency signing. Right. Unless they go, unless they get Bryce Huff, that is, that is going to be their highest average annual value is guard. See Pat Leonard tweet out Donnell Hunter. Did he? Yeah, it was, it was Donnell Hunter and uh, Jonah Jackson. Those were the two that he tweeted out. Okay. So yeah, Donnell, Donnell Hunter is. You know, obviously, so we talked about him a couple of weeks ago. I love Danelle Hunter; he's a beast. But he's going to get like twenty million per year. Yeah, there's no guard on. There's just no guard that's going to get that. No, uh, but it, it is a position the Giants just have to address. They like come, you know, come a week and a half from now, you will have a new guard on the Giants, probably two. Yeah, I, I think like I, I'm expecting maybe one, one little bit bigger move, but then also like Nick Gates. Ben, you know, I'm just saying, I'm throwing Nick Gates out there. He was cut from the commanders. He's familiar. But like a Nick Gates type of player, maybe even bring Ben Bredesen back. Like I'm in, like I'm envisioning like two to three moves at interior line. I can envision that too, but I feel like one of them has to be one of the top five high, highest paid guards this free agency. I don't think you can do little, okay. you know, little depth pieces, which is what Nick Gates and Ben Bredesen should be. You right. know, Nick Gates is coming off of a real, you know, we love him, but he's coming off of a really bad year where he got benched by the Commanders. Um, all right, Justin, let's get into this mock draft first. Why don't you talk to us about something? Oh, I'll talk to you about something, and that is the DraftKings Sportsbook. Get in on all the action with. The DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner in the NBA. New customers who deposit five dollars or more can get a no sweat bet. Up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code WORLD. Talk Giants first world. New customers who can get a no sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. That's right. Only on the DraftKings Sportsbook with code WORLD. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in West Virginia. Visit www.1800gambler.net in New York. Call 8 8- Seven seven eight Hope and Y or text Hope and Y four six seven three six nine in Connecticut helps develop for problem gambling. Call eight 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 
seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of booty hill casino and resort in kansas 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction void in ontario one swept no bet per new customer issued as one bonus bet based on amount of initial losing bet bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance see dkng.com slash promos for deposit wagering and eligibility restriction terms and responsible gambling resources bobby skinner you'll be glad you did you'll be glad you did all right, Justin, we can we can just kind of talk through this. I want to go through it casually instead of like, this guy does this, 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 and this. Um, so I, I went into this mock draft with the assumption that the first three picks would be uh, Kayla Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels, and then Marvin Harrison Jr., and then Joe Alt to the Chargers. Now, I got to do a full eval of Jim, Jim McCarthy. I've watched him a little bit, Justin. I took LSU, I took LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors at, at round one, pick six. I think he's a real deal, like going to be a stud wide receiver, one in the NFL. I don't think there's anything that he can't do. Like I, I look at him and I compare him to other receivers and it's like he does he does every route well. Like there's some little things that like I'm talking about like teeny tiny things that could probably be cleaned up, but the way he's able to accelerate and tempo himself, you know, the little foot jabs and stuff he runs and gets into his breaks, I think he's someone who's gonna win at all three levels of the field. And is going to be on a thousand yard wide receiver who's QB proof. Yeah, it's it's Malik Neighbors and probably only him, maybe a Dunze, but I think it's Malik Neighbors that's ultimately giving me really major pause about trading back. Because let me ask you this. You I, I don't know if there was a player in in any draft that you were just so sure that he was gonna be a stud and a superstar than Jamar Chase a couple years ago. You knew it. You know, the, when he opted the year that he opted out, You're like, yeah, this guy's just going to be a stud. He's going to be good. Do you put Malik Neighbors in that same class as you're just so sure that he's going to be good in the NFL? I mean, I'm so sure that he's going to be good. I don't, I don't like him as much as I like Jamar. Um, right now, I like Marvin Harrison Jr. more than I do Jamar. Um, so I don't put him in that same class, but he's right there. Like, he, he's, he's just right there when we look at all the other guys like if we're comparing them to Jalen Walter who we really liked from that class um you know who were some who were the receivers who went in 2022 like Garrett Wilson Chris Olave like I didn't I, you know Garrett Wilson actually taught me some but I love Chris Olave Malik Neighbors to me is is obviously a, a pretty big step ahead of what Olave is um and then last year's wide receiver draft class wasn't very good yeah like it's to me, it's not even a question mark of he's going to be in a thousand yard receiver in the NFL. Like, not like I don't have any doubts of that. Now, I've been watching. I'm I'm getting full QB evals done this week. I'm excited for it. Already started on Caleb Williams. Um, now, watching Malik Neighbors and watching Brian Thomas Jr. and watching some LSU offense. So you're you're watching Jaden Daniels at the same time. There is some holes in his game, and specifically over the middle of the field where he just doesn't see it well. And he didn't face much pressure at LSU. I like Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors that I might take those guys over Jaden Daniels. Um, just because, like, I, I have some question. Like, you know, I, I think there's similarities to Jaden Daniels to what Justin Fields is dealing with uh, in Chicago. And Jaden Daniels is older than him, right? He's been in college for a lot longer time. Uh, and it's now that being said, you put a gun to my head, Jaden Daniels or Malik neighbors. I might just take Jaden Daniels because of the Giants QB situation. And he's a hell of a talent. He can be special. He can be amazing, right? Like there's all the ability in the world. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be an above average quarterback who has the ability to be elite. I probably would do it, but like perfect process. Bobby says I would take the slam dunk Marvin Harrison jr. And Malik neighbors over him. Yeah, yeah, I, I've watched a good amount of McCarthy and, and Daniels. It's actually May that I'm on right now that I'm that I'm going through. The most uh, we'll, we'll talk about these quarterbacks when it gets to the you know the QB prospect v video and everything like that. But the f most frustrating thing with Daniels is he just he he sometimes will just miss guys short. Like it's it's the like the deep ball is so awesome. And if you want if you want big arm, I feel like he I feel like he could do it. I feel like you have such awesome throws by Daniels you have such awesome moments there's little wasted movement like all, all the kind of projectile stuff that you want to see quarterbacks hit I feel like he's got it then he's running into sacks 
He's missing guys short. He's you know he's even missing some. You mentioned how he misses some open guys down the field. Well, so no, just I'm, in the middle of the field, he doesn't see them. Like I'm talking yeah. about Malik Neighbors standing up straight in front of him with his hands in the air, wide ass open, and he take and he takes off and runs for 65, 7 yards, right. which is sick, and it's why I like him a lot. But it's also like you get you got to just hit the stuff that's there, or you're going to be Justin Fields in the NFL. Right, right. But I, at the same time, I think I do view. I didn't do like major QB eval the the year of Justin Justin Fields, but I just feel like Daniels has so much more talent than than Justin Fields. So I could be I could be wrong with that. I could ver- I could be very wrong with that. Um, but I think Fields has all the talent in the world. He just doesn't see the field well. Right. right. Um. You know. But yeah, I I, I love Jay. Like I like I said, perfect process says like I I don't care about your oh we need the draft quarter. I would take Jaden Daniels if 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 we're being real. I would take Jaden Daniels. Yeah. But I do have worries that you're going to be in the same position 2 3 years from there with Jaden right. Daniels that I I don't really have those worries with Caleb Williams and Drake May. Right. There's so much of quarterback that it, it, it's all it's all just projection, man. It's not like stats and you know the it's not like even like the CPOE stuff, which this isn't even available to the public for, for for college football, at least not available to me. So then I'm looking at adjust to complete. None of the shit matters. None of the stats matter. You, you, the stats do matter, but you have to put it in context and all this shit. You know, it, you know how like it's like oh well, hey, sometimes the fourth quarterback ends up being the best, right? I actually think the NFL is adjusting where they're taking the traits guys, and the traits guys are you know. Seeing th- are are have playing with confidence and and processing a little better. Well, I th- I actually think we're gonna like if jo- if the same exact carbon copy of let's say Caleb Williams was taken instead of Josh Allen back then, and Josh Allen's in this draft, I actually think Josh Allen would go number one or number two in this draft. Yeah, because well, of the way th- learning. because yeah, because I think the way the NFL has changed in the way that they learned, like hey, we can coach these cats up, but you got to have that ability to. A, you know, escape in the pocket, avoid sacks, and then make throws that, you know, that, you know, the good quarterbacks just don't and can't make. Yeah. All right. So you you took neighbors. Uh, if we walk away neighbors night one, I'm really happy uh, and I'm thrilled, especially, you know, hey, if, if we can't control what happens with the top three quarterbacks, those top three quarterbacks go early on. We take neighbors. Uh, I'm really thrilled. And the one thing I want you to watch out for McCarthy, I am not sold that McCarthy can throw and drive the ball to- outside the numbers and towards the sideline. I'm not sold. And that is the one thing that, you know, when next time that whenever we talk about quarterbacks. Insert um, one but, clip of him doing it. You saw one clip of him doing it? No, I'm saying insert one clip of him doing it. And it's like, yeah, but we're talking about consistently doing that. Right, is what right. You mean. I, mean, and, 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 I mean, maybe even drive the ball is the wrong phrase because sometimes he puts too much mustard on some of the throws that are outside the sideline and, to, and outside the numbers and towards the sideline. I I think he, and again, this is, I don't want to be, it's, everybody's not good and nobody, everybody's not going to be great so in the I'm, NFL. I'm going to go in order of Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and JJ McCarthy. And I'm again, I'm doing it all in one, in one week just so I could be like, hey, I just watched this guy and it's a lot better than what you do, right? Yeah. So I'm going, I'm going by what the consensus is. And saying, okay, does it does it actually live up to this? Are yeah. you being overhyped right now? Um, are, are there question marks? Right, you know. So that's that's the way I'm doing it this week. All right, round two, we have pick thirty nine and pick forty seven. Uh, I went Graham Barton, the offensive uh, lineman out of Duke. He's a tackle now. He's going to move inside in the NFL. I did a film breakdown on him. I, I really like him, Justin. I, I and I think he's going to slide in. He's got good balance. You can like, you know, he did a video with Brandon Thorne where he's like, hey, this guy beat me on this. I adjusted, and I, I think that's a guy who's going to fit at guard. And, you know, I, I do see him sometimes, like, people putting him at the end of the first round. There's a lot of offensive alignment, Justin, in this draft, right? Like, tackle. Like, there's, like, five or six tackles who may go in the first round. And then you have Jackson Powers Johnson and, you know, Troy Fatano, who maybe he's going to play tackle. And the interior guys just kind of slide. Like, it's just a position that, you know, it, it – it slides down on people's draft boards, right? Where they're, they may like them better, but they're like, you know what? I want to get this position. I want to go get the defensive end who I have a graded a little lower. I think there's a, 
it may not be Graham Barton, but I think one of these guys who's projected to go end of first, early, and this is early second, is going to fall to pick 39. And Graham Barton was the one in the mock draft simulator that I did. Yeah, all it takes is one team to fall in love with the guy. Like you get like the the Patriots with Cole Strange a couple years ago where nobody viewed him as a first-round pick, but he was a first-round pick. So um, the, the difference between that draft and this draft is that you're saying there's an abundance of of those players that could be, you know, value. You get them in the second round and, and stuff like that. So the one question that I have about Barton in terms of his relationship to the Giants, uh, what's his athletic profile? Is he is he more of a technician or is he a player that you can see Joe Shane liking and the staff liking because you know that they like their athletes and their plus-plus athletes? He's, he's going to be fine on the inside. He's a good athlete. Um, he's just got short arms. Where I, I actually think – he could be a tackle in a pinch. I don't want to put him out of tackle in the NFL because of the short arms, uh, but he's a, he's a good. Like I think he's I think he would fit very well. I think you know he's not like this mauler in the run game, but he gets movement. He's one of the few guys who can like get that initial push, but keep their feet moving throughout the block. Like his feet don't stop. He's good adjusting to counters really well. Um, and he's always got like his body weight is always balanced and even. He's not you know he's not you know going one way or he's not he's not getting you know his shoulders over his toes or anything like that he just plays with good like good posture so i think he's gonna be good the other second round pick i went is a my guy type of guy and he tested badly and i don't mind because i watch him play on film and that's cam kitchens out of miami you know i i want to bring back xavier mckinney let's pair him with a young safety who's going to be on a rookie deal for four years you can he's versatile Right, versatility is huge for for Shane Bowen. Uh, I think he's a, a huge playmaker. He's had eleven interceptions in his last twenty two games. Um, now there is times when you see him like, is he out of place on this? What are they asking him to do? But I th- I think with his versatility, his athletic ability, despite testing bad at the combine, which it always seems like safeties test bad at the combine, and then they fall and then they end up being good players. Shut up, Brian Branch and hell, Xavier McKinney is one of those cats. Um, I, I think he's going to be a baller. And you put him next to McKinney, and it allows you to do so much different shit with your defense. What do you say to uh, – maybe there's some people that's saying that he didn't have a great senior bowl. What do you say about that? I thought day two he played well. Um, so that's one of my issues with him in man coverage is when he's playing from cushion. Because he likes to be aggressive and undercut, he'll kind of just let stuff happen underneath him. Right when he's playing at like eight yards off, he'll kind of backpedal, and then the guy will break at five yards. Now he's not going to be in ton of man coverage where a wide receiver has you know a f- you know essentially a five way go, which you do in one on ones. But he likes to undercut through man coverage, um, so I, I think he's going to be fine when you're game planning and stuff. I don't think the the way that he likes to play man coverage is really good for the scene. But even then, he had like. Best one-on-one rep versus Ladd McConkey at the Senior Bowl to me was Cam Kinchins. Um, so I think he'll be fine once he's like in an 11-on-11 setting. And that's the kind of player he is. And then another Senior Bowl guy, round three, pick 70. Christian Haynes, UConn guard. Justin. So I only had one game of all 22 on him from this this uh, last year. Right? Versus NC State. Baller. Right? Ball. That's how he first caught my eye. I was watching Peyton Wilson. So I went and watched a broadcast of UConn versus Michigan in 2022. I'm like, okay, he's a year younger. Best, you know, best talent he's going to play, Mozzie Smith. He's a beast, dude. Like, he he is a mean son of a bitch. Like, he he plays nasty. He's a finisher. He's got flexible hips. I, I, I want Christian Haynes, right? Like, I was worried that the Senior Bowl gave me too much hype on him. And in reality, it's like, it's a little more. Now, some pass protecting stuff. Got to be better working side to side, better IDing stuff. But I, I, I really liked him um, out of UConn. The Senior Bowl, like it was. I watched Peyton Wilson; he caught my eye, um, and he works to the second level. Beautiful. I think he's gonna. I think he's really gonna help in the run game. And then Senior Bowl, freaking loved him. And then watching his film, like fully eval, I, I was like, okay, this is this is a guy that I flat out want. I mean, I know you don't control the the mock draft simulator. I, I don't think he's lasting to seventy. You don't? I mean, I, I also, I, I, I will say, you, you've done way more players in this draft so far than I have, but it just seems like he's a good NFL player. And, and the guys that have stood out at the Senior Bowl, Zion Johnson two, three years ago, John Michael Schmitz last year, 
seems like these best linemen that stand out at the senior bowl, they they don't last till the third round. But do you even think like last year there was like no interior class where this year there is. And maybe he doesn't. We'll see. And then day three, we can go a little quicker on this. Yeah. I went with the fourth round. I went Rutgers, hometown kid, cornerback Max Melton. I'm moving him to the nickel, though. Uh, he tested really well at the combine. I did this I did this before the combine, Justin. Yeah. Tested really well. Um, but I am moving him to the nickel for a couple reasons. One, I don't think he has good recovery speed, right? So if he, if he falls behind, which isn't often, he doesn't really have that recovery speed. I can't really trust that on the outside. Um, but in the nickel... Like he's and he's he to me is a hip watcher, right? Where he's like, which helps him stay connected, and which is going to stop QBs from going that way on quick routes, which I think works well in the slot. And he can play the freaking run, right? Which is obviously going to be a huge part about playing nickel corner. I truly think that he can come in and compete for the nickel corner jo- corner job right away over Cordell Flott. Yeah, I, I love Max Milton, and I, and I do think there is a world where he can maybe survive on the outside in the NFL. In a so zone yeah. scheme, in a zone scheme, I think he can. And then obviously we're playing zone, so he had. But I think he's going to be just. You put him in the nickel, and he's going to be a beast there. Thirty-two and one eighth inch arms. How do you like that? So he's certainly a little light, but man, he's he's long. And I, I think the biggest thing for for Melton is that he's a he's a competitor. Um like he he do just competes, he fights and I think you especially see that with his work and his effort in the run game like like you said. So I would love if Max Melton were were yeah. to be a giant. Yeah, go watch him versus Michigan and Ohio State. Like he balled versus Ohio State. Michigan he gave up some plays. Roman Wilson got him for a touchdown, I believe, uh and a couple other plays. But he goes out there and he freaking competes down in down out and that's what I want. I want my nickel corn to be a grimy dude. And I, I view it as like, oh, well, he could play on the outside. Because I do think, there, like you said, there's a world where he could play on the outside. But I'm going to put him in the nickel, and he's not just a guy who couldn't play this position. I think he right. can thrive at that spot. Round five is an Andre Patterson pick. And it's LA LSU defensive tackle Mason Smith, 6'5", 308. 35-inch arms so long. He's like a big, imposing figure out there. Maybe you add a little more weight to him. I don't love his film. Right, I, I I watched the film. I don't love it, but even I hated Jordan Riley's film. Right, and the Giants even Andre Patterson basically said in an interviews like, yeah, his film sucked, but we identified as someone we want to work with. With Mason Smith, you see the flashes of greatness. Right, he's got knockback power. There's every once in a while he has this pass rush move that's like, oh, that's that's elite. So you get him using his hands right, getting off the ball a little better. That is a ball of clay that I would love for Andre Patterson to get his hands on in the fifth round. Yeah, I saw this immediately when you sent me in the dock. I said, "Yeah, this is an Andre. This is an Andre Patterson pick with those thirty-five inch arms." Um, especially day three, you're not going to get great football players, but I think you're going to look for projects, and I think you're going to look for traits. So, this is certainly a traits pick. Yeah, and I mean, you you have a need there too. And then the last pick. Now, if there's any pick I didn't like was Washington running back Dylan Johnson, who I think is a, a solid back. Um, to be honest, at this point, I don't have a lot of day three evals done, and I was just kind of watching running backs. I watched a few. He was the best of the three that I watched. Um, but I think the Giants, if if Saquon Barkley doesn't come back, is going to try and get their hands on a back to come and compete with whoever they bring in in free agency. Um, and I, I think Dylan Johnson, he's a big back. In a sense, reminds me a bit of Eric Gray, which is why I put him in here because it may be a slot for the Giants. Is like a big, uh, you know, bigger back, you know, not the fastest in the world, but you know, can can make can create some explosives. Like has that one cut, make a guy miss, and falls forward. But I would like to see him run with his, you know, I w- like him to take on contact with his legs and not his shoulders because he always falls forward, but he's not running through that contact because he's kind of like, okay, I'm gonna put my shoulders through him and fall forward and get those extra two yards instead of driving and trying to maybe break those tackles. But Hey, it's a, a six round running back. I'm not expecting, you know, the world with it. Yeah. All right. So that's your, that's your, that's your mock draft. Um, I, I some, some thoughts on it. This is, and by the way, this is, you say this at the beginning of every mock draft, but I'm, I'm thinking of it just in comparison to what the Giants may do. This is what you would do. This isn't your prediction of what the Giants will do. Correct. I I do think there's going to be an edge rusher in there, and I'm afraid it's going to be an edge rusher that isn't very exciting, but is big and strong. You know, kind of like 
let's just let's just say Darius Robinson, even though he's you know projected to be the day one, day two pick. Like Darius Robinson, except just worse. I, I am afraid I I'm afraid that's gonna come this draft just because they don't have anybody. Like they don't they don't they don't have anybody. And I think they're gonna look they're gonna look for a different prototype with uh under Shane Bowen. Yeah, this is obviously a pre free agency mock draft, so maybe you know, some of those answers will get out. I would like this to get out on Monday so be a little more a little more pre free agency. Um but hey, please go watch the video. Or share it with a friend who maybe won't watch it because those are videos that help us grow, and I don't I don't want to take away from that. So please, I'm I'm asking you to go watch the watch the video. And again, there'll be film, and it's a little it's a little more clean in there, you know, describing the prospects. So interactive. Yeah. So uh, anything else, Justin? Before we go. No, I mean, I should I should kind of know this, but. What's the timeline of everything with free agency? Because th- Thursday, Friday. Uh... Well, Friday we'll do our little preview of like what positions we want them to attack, and and just throw some names out there. And then next week is a play it by ear type week. You know, free agency kicks off at noon on Monday. You know, the legal tampering period. So we will every year that we've done talking giants, they've made signings on that Monday, but not every team does. So that is a a re- you know has, news happens and we react type of week. Um, so we'll have. You know, we usually end up having three episodes free agency a week. Yeah. So we will we'll recap it all. Um, hey, and we we go we go deep. Like I have a film breakdown out within five hours of these guys signing. We go all in on on free agency. So very excited. When's the uh, when's the tag deadline? When the day that people are listening to this. Oh, great. Yep. Um, I think something's going to get done with McKinney. You haven't heard them anyone dealing through the media and the giants are have no problem dealing with it through the media and i'm sure mckinney's people don't have so i think something happens with mckinney has mckinney cryptic tweeted anything nothing could too crit nothing out of the ordinary (laughs) okay Um, (laughs) all right that's an episode we will be back on friday with a little free agency preview maybe darren waller will retire by then we will see you then until then let's go big blue